the the lucky lefty special is absolutely hysterical i uh uh loved that hour thank you very much it, and and a lot of work yeah I, i'm sure it was did you when you were diagnosed with testicular cancer and then you were like did you i mean i'm sure your first thought was i gotta beat this and second was how can i make this funny into an hour uh it was almost uh the opposite i, I was like I, like even going to the hospital on the night of when my balls hurt the first time i was like i should probably take notes because this is going to be material i was looking for <laughs> you know uh, uh and then you know like beating it just became like a uh, almost like mission oriented but i i never really had any fear about any of it it's like yeah all right we'll we'll solve this we'll cross every bridge as it comes you know and like every good comedian you're like how do i get material out of this is that exactly. how you look at everything in life Yes, it's just what is happening right now. Uh, this is crazy. I should write all this down. This is going to be a new hour. Did you um, did you have people afterwards, after the hour came out, did you have people that were like, dude, I went through the same thing. I appreciate it. You helped me out. Anything like, or was it more like, can you do more ball jokes? <laughs> it was, uh, actually, I was very surprised by a lot of people who were like, like, yo, like at, at the meet and greets, people come up like, that's man i went through the same shit I, i'll never forget it that i was in um uh uh in florida and i don't know what's going on in florida but a lot of people had cancer in the audience but uh uh like i randomly started talking to one guy in the crowd i had never seen me before i'd never seen him he was on a date and i was just like like engaged with him and then after the show he came up to me he's like yo how did you know like that is crazy that you were talking to me like i went through the same exact wow. thing i'm on this third date with this lady she has no idea now i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about it like <laughs> that's crazy i was like that's nuts that's uh, no pun intended there but <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome but yeah definitely definitely had a lot it's it's a it's got a niche audience uh yeah uh, yeah uh, but i'm sure it'll find people but it's well, relatable. Like Tommy, I mean, I think, uh, you know, guys, guys can relate and enjoy it. And I appreciate it. I thought I thought it was great and, and pretty brave. You know? Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So tell me about what you're working on now as far as, you know, you're on the road. Are you working on a new hour for another special? What, what yeah, you, you know, I, I'm just trying to I'm in my have some fun era. You know, I think the first two hours, the first hour, I put a lot of pressure on myself to make sure it was like my uh I, you know, it was my first real tour i was like let's mm -hmm. put this together i had you know some of the greatest hits of my own uh at the time and i weave those in tell my personal story but also like i'm i'm a big fan of like structure and if you like study the hours that i put together like it's there uh you know the first one was like a movie second one it was like a very contained story this one i'm just trying to tell a bunch of jokes uh like some very short ones some very long ones uh just like loose vignettes and see how they string together i'm not so married to the idea of uh it's got to be all weaved together and all that because you you know my favorite comics some of my favorite comics one of my favorite comedians mitch hedberg like it was oh. just it's just bang 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 and then i was listening to another album um uh don gavin who my friend put me on to was just like a a road vet 25 year guy it's just like like there's small vignettes but just like bang 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 joke 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 sure. and it's really sure. like i'm a big fan of kind of varying styles and art like all that kind of shit so yeah i was gonna ask you you know Sorry, who you really you. like because I, I i know a lot of comedians and uh and there are so you know like you said mitch hedberg you know is punchline 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 and then you have storytellers like tom segura or somebody like that who you know tells a story and it kind of weaves together it when you started out um did you have a style you wanted to go for or did were you just like i just want to get up and make people laugh yeah it was more the latter you know i'm i am not a student of comedy in the sense that when when i started comedy I wasn't like I gotta do stand up. Like, you were it wasn't, it wasn't, finance. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a lifelong dream. It wasn't like I knew when I was seven years old. I watched my first Dana Carvey special. And I was like, I gotta do that. You know, I wasn't one of these people that uh, could quote Car Carlin to this day. You know, like it was more like I like being on stage. I like making people laugh. 
uh, uh, let's figure out how I want to do it. And uh, Chris Rock was my biggest, like, the uh, and remains like the biggest influence in my life in mm -hmm. comedy in terms of. And uh, uh, when I started, like, my first, if you were to watch my first open mic set, it's just a Chris Rock impression, you know? It's just, <laughs> uh, and it's just like, wow, that's. Like I, and still to this day, a lot of Hedberg and and, and Chris, I think if I listen to myself, I can hear stylistically mm -hmm. and structurally. Um, but you know, uh, I'm figuring out my own shit, and it, it's been fun, you know. Chris Rock is you. You consider him the guy that that kind of discovered you, and you wrote for him, and mm -hmm. you know a lot of a lot of stuff. And then you eventually became a writer for Saturday Night Live as well, right? Yeah, I mean, Chris. Uh, I worked with Chris. 2015 he discovered me quote unquote he saw me at a show uh and told me i was funny and uh, it's gonna be in my tombstone um, <laughs> and then uh few chris later, rock thinks i'm funny yes exactly <laughs> and uh and then a few months later i was writing for the oscars that was my first writing job ever 2016 um and that put me that put me on a few people's radars and then uh snl was 2017 to 2018 which was a great time i was writing an update for justin che Awesome. And uh, uh, after that, since then, I've basically been doing stand up the entire time. Uh, you know, I had a few, I had a production job at Sam B. I was a writer on Lily Singh, but beyond that, it's just been uh, uh, stand up, stand up, stand up. Is, is the writing room like for Saturday Night Live or any of the others, is it like what you think of or like what they show like on a TV show, like 30 Rock? Or is it more you're just alone trying to get jokes on TV? Yeah, I mean, uh, on update, you know, I can't speak to what the sketches uh, writers room was like uh, uh, in depth. I just know that you know they met, uh, read through was Wednesdays and Monday was pitch day, and then and then Tuesday they were like writing all night for the read through kind of thing. But for uh, um, update, it was just write jokes in a vacuum. Uh, the producers would give you all the headlines and stuff, and just write jokes, write jokes, write jokes. Meet on Friday, talk shit, see what's working, what's not working. Uh, Saturday morning, read through again. Uh, and then just write all day until showtime and then write up until showtime. Um, and that was it. I mean, it's like, it, it's definitely a, a boiler room kind of situation. And then it's also like an office type situation. It's, it's sure. a combination. Yeah. Did you, you, you remember your first joke that made it on, on air? Cause I know a lot of times with writers, it's like you write 25 jokes, none of them get on this week, but maybe next week you'll get one on or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I think I got one or two on to the first show, but my favorite thing that I, I said was, um, it was a very small note, but it was right after, uh, so when I was there, Trump, it was the first year of Trump's presidency and the right. hurricane had just hit Puerto Rico and, uh, Che had a joke about Donald Trump, uh, uh just going and throwing paper towels and, and instead of like, um, yeah, yeah cutting a check basically and uh we were trying to find the word uh for che to say about donald and it was like um uh, the joke was and and write him a check with our money you cheap blank and we we're just trying to fill in the word right and uh i suggested cracker and and, and <laughs> it just hit and uh we called the president a cracker <laughs> and uh I got that cue card framed at my house. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, you and Michael Che are friends. Is that? Yeah, that's my guy. Were you, able, were you able to find his voice pretty easily when you're writing for him? And it was actually pretty difficult. Uh, really? You know, he is. He is, in my opinion, one of the best stand-ups working. Um, and uh, uh, what makes him an update anchor is that he's got a very distinct unique thing going on and so like w it wasn't like necessarily writing full-on jokes it was like just giving idea areas um uh for him i was actually it was easier for me to write for colin oh uh, really uh just like from a because colin's more of like a distinct joke telling guy you know right whereas right. with uh, uh che he's got such a defined perspective and that perspective is what makes him him mm -hmm. and so it's very hard to find the angle in uh in a in a Che thought only Che could think of it, you know. Right, right. Did you ever want to be on camera, on like you know a a cast member, or was that? It seems like comedians either go one of two ways. They're like, I just want to do stand up. 
I, just leave me alone. Or I want to get a sitcom. I want to be on Saturday Night Live. I, you know. I'm, uh, I hate Vivek Ramaswamy, but I hope he wins so that maybe I get a shot <laughs> <laughs> at playing the man. Uh, no, I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm a take opportunities as they come. Sure. Uh, they've been afforded to me for whatever reason that the Lord above has destined. So like if, if Lauren were to call me like, Hey, I take it back. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> like, <laughs> no I, hard feelings. Yeah, come yeah, on I, back. I would, I would happily, uh, uh, go back or, or take, you know, whatever sitcom or anything opportunity to afford me at the end of the day, like, uh, stand up is the love and passion and, uh, uh, it's always going to be there, yeah. you know, and anything that I do is, is additive to that. Like if I were to be on SNL, it would help me sell tickets. If I were to be a writer at the show, it would help me sell tickets. It, sure. You know, so it, that's all it is for me. Uh, if I can still find that outlet to do what I want to do. Right. What, uh, what, what do your parents think about, uh, about your career? Are they, uh, I'm sure they're pretty happy now that you're successful you know, you're making it happen, but mm -hmm. when you first decided uh, this comedy thing's for me, when I first decided the comedy thing for was for me, they decided it was not. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I always knew that they weren't going to disown me, uh, so there wasn't really much they could do to dissuade me of this uh, pursuit. Um, I think part of my mom is still holding out that uh, uh, that I go get my MBA or something, but. Uh, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? But no, they're, they're very happy that, that my dad has, uh, you know, is, works at a liquor store and people come in and be like, you heard of this comedian? I'm like, oh, yeah, because, you know, they recognize the last name. Right. Like, oh, right. Is that? And my dad's like, yeah, it's my son. Uh, you know, so it's always it's always cool that uh, my parents get to kind of be pseudo famous. So they're like, you know, uh, their friends and family. Me, which, do they yeah. uh, do they do they come to your shows that they have they? Oh, you know? yeah, they've, they've been to a few. Um, yeah. it's always been intense. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't, you don't talk a lot about them in your act though. Like any, like making fun of them, disparaging anything like that. So. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I make it a point to not be disparaging. Uh, right. if, if anything, I'll make them, I'll make myself the butt of their jokes. Um, uh, not that they aren't funny and do funny things. So the things is just, uh, uh I want to make sure that, they know that I respect them and, <laughs> and love them very dearly. They've been they've been to a few shows, um, like the special tapings and stuff. But right. uh, they literally watch everything that I do because it goes up on YouTube. And like you know, they follow like two people on YouTube. You know, it's like myself. <laughs> You're and one. Like, yeah, and I'm one of them. And uh, uh, it's interesting to see. Like, I'll get texts like, "Hey, what what's this joke about?" <laughs> or, <laughs> Uh, and Didn't they my, catch you smoking weed once? They on did. Video? They did. That's when I had to stop doing those weed live streams because uh, <laughs> my parents texted me right away, like, "Hey, what do you, you stop smoking?" <laughs> you know. Uh, uh, but yeah, that was cool. They they are fans, and uh, obviously, and um, uh, they watch everything. It's kind of it's kind of I gotta have that in the back of my head before I put up anything too crazy. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Don't want to embarrass the parents too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're doing, uh, do you like doing crowd work? Is that is that like when you're doing a set? Do you like doing the crowd work because of the kind of the unknown variable of that? Well, the the you know I've built a a, a touring career off of you know, initially off of building, I, I'm putting up stand up and crowd work clips, right? Yeah, and I think it's lulled people into thinking that a lot of it is crowd work. Um, when really the crowd work is just like me trying to pivot into something I want to talk about. Right. It's like a transition point as opposed to like the, the crux of the show. You know, I, I am a fan of very few standups, them being like Chris, Dave, you know, Mitch, like though Patrice, Patrice is like the only one where I'm like, he made it think like you were doing, he was doing crowd work, but right. It was actually just again like a pivot thing to talk about right. what he wants to talk about, or he's or he's doing a little rope a dope, you know, like trying to make you think you're about to have a conversation and then hits you with some shit. And that's like that's really what I enjoy doing the most. Um, I do enjoy talking to fans and talking to the crowd and and having that be part of the live experience. But it is not what the uh, material and what the the special, so to speak, is going to be, you know. 
I just noticed with more more comedians, you and and others doing you know more social media that shows crowd work it seems like there's an awful lot more you know back talk from the audience uh -huh. and, and stuff i mean one of your viral clips is you with the trump supporter and mm -hmm. you know a few others it seems like you know you've been doing comedy for a while it's kind of changed it feels like in the last you know five six years yeah for sure i mean for better or for worse uh people are enjoying themselves a bit more at comedy <laughs> shows than they used to i think uh the proliferation of crowd work clips and all that has been net positive in the sense that a lot more people are exposed to comedy and they mm -hmm. you know like a lot of my people that come out to the shows it's the first time I've ever seen a comedy show really? um, and i think with a lot of my peers it's they have the same experience which is great i think uh i think it's very easy to kind of tame that beast of people yelling out uh mm -hmm. like 99 times out of 100 it's a person who doesn't know that they can't do that and you're like hey thanks for chiming in but that's not how this is gonna go and then at one time it's some drunk lady who thinks she wants to defend donald trump uh, but is not really in position to do so and then you know she goes viral for all the wrong reasons exactly <laughs> exactly and yeah. you go viral for the good reasons yeah <laughs> What do you uh, what do you do to relax when you're not doing stand up? What do you do to what what's your passion? Uh, a passion. I don't really have a lot of passion, which I'm working on cultivating. Uh, but you know, I've, I've gotten addicted to working out, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to trying to be a better reader. Currently reading, where is this? Michael Lewis's uh, oh, yeah. Going Infinite about our good friend Sam Bankman Fried. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm about halfway through, and uh, uh, I'm enjoying just like it re anything that helps me be a better writer and better stand up. I, I, I want to do and yeah. writing, writing and working out are those two things right now. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, we're looking forward to the show. UPH Sunday, October 15th. It's going to be awesome. I will definitely be there. I, Please. You haven't been to UPH, but it's a, it's a restored old church. Uh -huh. So you'll have fun up there. You can <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of sinning. <laughs> a lot of sinning in the church. Yeah, so yeah. you go for it. Uh, I'm looking forward to the show. Been a fan for a long time. I can't wait to, to see you live. Awesome, man. Thank you very much for the time. See you then. Absolutely. My pleasure. Safe travels.